Hello and welcome back. I still use Ubuntu. With this statement, I want to show you the steps I take to customize my Ubuntu 2404 system to suit my needs. This includes replacing Snap with Flatpak, how I install apps, which apps I use, and the tweaks I apply to refine my Ubuntu desktop that I recommend to you as well. Interested? My name is Michael from Fast Linux Channel and now let's get started. First of all, this is a freshly installed system. There are a few steps I always follow. I'd like to show them to you. Open the GNOME settings in Ubuntu and go to Privacy Settings. First, turn off Connectivity Checking. I don't want a ping to send to canonical servers every few minutes. If the connection fails, I will notice it myself. I also don't want to send automatic error reports. This is why I disable the error reporting. On LTS systems there should hardly be any errors and therefore you can either switch this off completely or set it to manual. Then you can always decide whether you want to send an error report or not. The next step I always recommend a good tool for fine-tuning is the GNOME Tweak tool. This is particularly helpful if you want to set different icon sets in the design, for example, or move the elements in the windows from the right to left. Users of macOS will be familiar with this and may also want to do the same under Ubuntu. If you want to install the GNOME Tweak tool, open the terminal and type sudo apt install gnome tweaks. That's it. We will now install Flatpak before we delete Snap. Because if we were to delete Snap straight away, we would no longer have a browser installed. That would be unattractive. So we first set up Flatpak and then delete Snap in the end. Short note, don't worry, you don't have to type out all these commands below. They are in the description below for you to copy out. Open a terminal and install the Flatpak binary via this command sudo apt install flatpak. In the next step, we'll install the GNOME Software Center and the Flatpak plugin. Type sudo apt install dash dash no dash install dash recommends GNOME dash software. In the second step, sudo apt install gnome-software-plugin-flatpak. But now if we type flatpak remotes, we see there is no repository for flatpak apps. Because of that, we have to add the flatapp repository to our system. Just copy the command, paste it into your system and hit enter. You may have to provide your user credentials and that's it. In the last step, we will need to restart the system. Type sudo reboot. See you in a few seconds. Under Ubuntu, you can integrate external package sources, so-called PPAs. That stands for Personal Package Archive. App developers can operate their own repository via PPA and offer the latest version of their app there as a Debian package format. These versions are then usually more up-to-date than those in the Ubuntu repositories. I like to use the following three PPAs, however I would not recommend including just any PPA as software from dubious developers could compromise the system. That's why I only use few PPAs with care. This is my recommendation. Keepass XC, Mozilla PPA and LibreOffice. If you also want them in your system, open a terminal and copy the commands in the description below. First. To add the PPA from the Keepass XC repository. Second, add the Mozilla PPA to install Firefox and Thunderbird ESR later. And third, install LibreOffice PPA. 
After you provided the PPAs, maybe the update manager comes up and tells you, hey, there are some updates. Maybe Keepass XC or LibreOffice, if you have them already pre-installed, will get updates. But we do not install Firefox and Thunderbird right now. We will do it later after we deleted Snap. I install the following apps on my Ubuntu system via Flatpak. First, Dialect. This is a simple translator app similar to EG Deepl. Flat Seal. By this app, you can set privileges of all other installed Flatpak apps. Draw.io, a simple but very good app to point or capture thoughts graphically. Extension Manager, very important for implementing GNOME extensions, we'll cover this later. Nextcloud Client, my Nextcloud client to sync my clients with my Nextcloud instance. OBS Studio, for screen recording, I think there is no need to tell further information about OBS Studio. Next. C file client. Besides Nextcloud, I also have a C file instance. To sync my client, I need the client software. Next, Spotify. I love streaming music and therefore I can't get past Spotify. Next, VS Codium. A fork official studio but without the countless trackers. Railway. An app for checking public transport and timetables. Next app, Tuba, my newly discovered Mastodon client. Next app, Joplin, my app to take notes encrypted and sync them to my Nextcloud instance. Next app, MusicPod, my app for listening to podcasts. Next app, GIMP, my app when it comes to graphic design. Next app, UnGoogle Chromium, my choice when it comes to Chromium-based browsers. And the last app, Microsoft Edge. I use Edge for some things, e.g. for activities in Microsoft Azure Cloud environment. We will now prepare the installation of Firefox and Thunderbird. Since Thunderbird is providing as a snap package, Canonical has configured Ubuntu so that the command sudo apt install Thunderbird installs the snap version. To avoid this, we need to ensure that the PPA has a higher priority than the Ubuntu repository. Ubuntu assumes the snap version is newer than the one in the PPA you added. By setting the PPA's priority, we can ensure that Ubuntu won't upgrade to the Thunderbird Debian, also package, this is the snap wrapper from the repositories. Let's do it. First, we need to create a file. Open terminal. I personally prefer VI Editor. You can also choose a different one, for instance, Nano. So, open a terminal, type sudo vi etc apt preferences.d mozilla team minus ppa. Add the following lines, copy them and paste them in the file by typing i for insert and then right click paste. The top three lines tell your system to prioritize the Thunderbird Debian package from the Mozilla Team PPA. The bottom three lines prevent the system from installing Thunderbird from the Ubuntu repositories, which would reinstall the Snap version. But keep in mind, we'll perform the installation at the end to avoid conflicts with the Snap version. We will now move on to the next topic, installing GNOME extensions. I always use GNOME with the following extensions, which I also recommend. Open the Extension Manager app and then search for these extensions. Bing Wallpapers for daily changing wallpapers. I love this extension. Next one, Blur My Shell for a transparent top panel and dash. Just keep in mind, if you use the Ubuntu dock on the left side, you have to do a small modification I'll show you now. Otherwise, you will figure up these round corners. This is more suitable for the dock. If you use the panel mode, you should switch this off. Next add-on, just perfection, to move the clock to the right.
Next extension, custom accent colors starting from Ubuntu 24.04. This is necessary to theme also Flatpak apps, alter GDK3 apps and so on with the accent color you prefer. In my case, I choose the standard Ubuntu orange and I can set this up also here. And if I close current running Flatpak apps and reopen them, then they will also appeal in the orange nuance. I love this. Let me show you how to set up some web apps. I set up some web apps, but the choice of services depends on your needs. I use apps like X, formerly Twitter or LinkedIn as web apps. For this, I recommend using either Google Chromium or Microsoft Edge. Firefox doesn't currently support web apps and the web app manager from Linux Mint 22 doesn't work smoothly on Ubuntu 24.04 as it used to. To avoid headache, follow my recommendation. Open on Google Chromium, browse to, for instance, linkedin.com and then in on Google Chromium, choose Menu, then Stream, Save and Share and then Install Page as an app. If you use Microsoft Edge, go to Menu, Apps and then install this site as an app. That's it. You can also pin this app to the dock for quick access and then use the website more or less as a native app. I love that. Now we want to free our Ubuntu system from Snap. To do this, we first need to get a list of the installed Snap apps. This can be done with the following commands. First, list all Snap packages. Go in your terminal and type Snap list. We have to delete the list of apps from the first column. I have the appropriate commands here, which you can find in the description of the video below. Just copy them all and paste it into the terminal. Maybe you have to provide your user password and then let it go. After this is done, ensure the list is empty. Snap list should provide you an empty list. Okay, looks good. Now we will stop and disable Snap. First we will stop the SnapD socket service. Just copy this line and paste it here. sudo systemctl disable dash dash now SnapD socket. This command is not absolutely necessary, but otherwise the following commands would give an unpleasant warning. Because of that, I recommend you to execute this command. And now we stop the SnapD daemon sudo systemctl stop snapd. In the next step we will disable the service. sudo systemctl disable snapd. And now we're gonna mask it. sudo systemctl mask snapd. Now we will purge snap by this command. sudo apt purge snapd dash y. By the prefix Dash Y, you confirm to delete it in all associated services and packages. Otherwise, you have to confirm the question. So it's up to you to decide. So if this is done, we prevent apt from reinstalling snap. sudo apt dash mark hold snap D. After this is done, we have to do some housekeeping. We will delete some snap related directories. Just copy all four lines, paste it in the system and press enter. Now we'll create a file to prevent snap from being reinstalled. I will do it again in vi sudo vi etc apt preferences.d no snap.pref. Add these three lines and then escape, write quit. Now we'll refresh apt sudo apt update. And now, ladies and gentlemen, is the time to install Firefox ESR and Thunderbird ESR. sudo apt install Firefox ESR Thunderbird. And then confirm with yes. And then, after this is installed, we can open Firefox and Thunderbird as well, both as Debian packages provided to our system. Yay!
In my opinion, Ubuntu is still a great Linux distribution despite all the controversies surrounding Canonical. It has become much more polished for desktop use and is once again a top contender. It's no surprise I continue to use Ubuntu. It suits me perfectly, not everyone needs to agree with this, and that's fine. When mind, heart and gut are in harmony, it's the ideal state. While I am not entirely there due to Ubuntu's push toward Snap, my solution works well for me in day-to-day -day use, so there is no need for changes anytime soon. It's unfortunate that these extra steps are necessary, but I don't regret them. Hopefully these steps help you too. If this seems too complicated because you're just starting out or you're still watching this video from a Windows machine, don't worry, everyone starts somewhere. Let me know what you think in the comments. Did the tips help? If you have more tips, share them in the comments as well. If you're hungry for more content, feel free to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up and hit the bell to get notified when new videos come out. In the end card I have two more videos for you. One covers the truth about Ubuntu, why I continue using Ubuntu, the other discusses four common mistakes Linux switchers make. Check them out. Thanks for watching. Thank you for your kind attention, ladies and gentlemen. See you soon. Peace.